let's shift to some of those other issues. Because you, you said something in the midst of all that that I think is a sort of beautiful thing about what real liberalism is. Yeah. And one of the things that I've really been making the focus of this show is to show people what real, true, classical liberalism is. Yeah. Because I think it's been conflated with a lot of leftist ideas in America, but really all over the West. Yeah. And, uh, and to also show that it doesn't mean you're purely a libertarian, because I think there's some problems with that. What would be your bet? Do you consider yourself a classical liberal? Is that, sure. That would be Although, your, if, you, if I had to put another label on yes, you? Yes, yes, I'm certainly a classical li, li, a liberal. The only trouble with the phrase is as soon as you say classical, people say, oh, well, that's old fashioned. <laughs> in, a, in a modern, complicated economy, we can't have, we got to regulate, right. which is, you know, of course, exactly the opposite of the truth. In a modern, complicated economy, it's too hard to regulate. In a household, Households are socialist enterprises, entirely appropriately. Mom is the central planner and everything works out just fine. People share, they, okay, that's cool. But that's for a very simple little economy. Mm -hmm. For what uh, Hayek, uh, Friedrich Hayek called the great society before um, L Lyndon Johnson took the phrase, namely a large society, you can't do the sharing stuff. That's not how it works. You've got to trade, and you can't regulate it. It's insane to try to regulate it as though people in Washington are knew better what to do than the people on the scene. So, so I call it real liberalism. I'm working on a book that maybe I can, I, of essays of, of, that I've done on this, called um, How to Be, <laughs> hear this, a Sisterly real liberal. I'm hoping to catch my left-wing friends because the word liberal yeah. in Britain and the United States got way off track in the late 19th century. Mm -hmm. Came to mean anything, it came to mean slow socialism. Right, That's so it, it came to mean progressive basically. Progressive, but, yeah. But as I've said many times, progressivism is starting to veer into regressivism because these ideas are not for it, liberty and It's not starting to, right from the beginning. Yeah. They, because it was- So I was just late to In the, bar, the late yeah. 19th century, it was terribly paternalistic. And in, in the form of American progressivism, um, Wilson and Roosevelt, first Roosevelt and all that, it was highly paternalistic. Um, nasty even, racist. One of the things that my friends on the left think is just grand is the minimum wage. And 100 years ago, the minimum wage came into being in the United States, state by state. And its declared purpose was to keep immigrants, women, blacks, his, uh, uh, Chicanos, out of the labor force, to drive them out entirely. Mm -hmm. Newspaper editorials, the economics profession, they all said, oh boy, this is good for the Anglo-Saxon race. Right, basically because those people would be the ones qualified, because those were good jobs to have. Those were good hand. jobs, and you yeah. just take all those people out, and then the only people who are left are Northern Europeans. And it was a terrible, terrible thing. Yeah. Um, well, what did they think was gonna happen to the other people? They were gonna, they, they literally said they're gonna die out. Now how, how women are gonna die out, I don't quite understand. But they, 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 these were people in favor of immigration, mm -hmm. closing immigration, in favor of, uh, of, uh, of segregation. Um, Woodrow Wilson famously would not have a great black scientist to the White House. Uh, um, and, and so it went. I mean, <laughs> modern liberalism was conceived right from the beginning in this authoritarian way. And it's still, even though they, 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 my friends, the liberals, liberals in the American sense, I have this um, assumption that people who are not progressive are just bad people. Why would you listen to Hitler? Mm -hmm. So they don't listen to arguments that I, you or I make. And so they don't get that what they're, what they're actually about is authoritarian control over other people's lives. Yeah, you know, I've mentioned this many times over the last couple of years, but as I've sort of had my awakening to this, and I mentioned to you before, I, kind of, I basically was a progressive for a while. I was that, too, I was a Marxist at yeah. one point. <laughs> we'll get to that too. Um, 
but that as I've had my awakening, I've seen that the most intolerance yeah. comes from these people when oh, I've yeah. tried to debate them on ideas. Friends, I'm talking about, the amount of friends that I've lost I was just in the last reading, couple of years. I was just reading this morning um, a column in the Times, the London Times, by my friend Matt, Matt Ridley, who's a, a science journalist mm -hmm. in, in Britain. And he was, uh, he was saying that um, uh, um, in environmental regulations are clumsy and aren't working very well. And, and the comments <coughs> were just terrible. They were, they were oh, you're, t you're a bad man. Yeah, yeah. You must Ridley. be being paid by the you fossil fuel people. You must be being paid by the fossil fuel people, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And it, 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 it's as though they're just not listening. They, Matt was making very simple, quantitatively based arguments. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go into them. You know, and, and the, their reaction was not to listen. Is that oh, not in their, 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 right, they sort of hate religion, like progressives sort of hate religion, and yet they love that's right. the, the purity, the purity exactly. test of religion, they, exactly. they love that. Exactly. But I, I, I wanna back up to something you said about um, minimum wage, because yeah. just in the last week I've been seeing, you know, there were these marches for $15 minimum wage oh, here in the God, States. Oh what a mistake. Uh, so we can, we can unpack that a little bit. But I, at the same time that I was seeing this, I was also seeing in the news that Amazon is now opening stores that we're gonna, are gonna have no employees. Yeah, You're yeah. just gonna walk in and your phone will you know, recognize something over Wi-Fi and you'll be able to take whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, what a, what a disconnect yeah. in an idea and the actual world. Amazon is saying, we don't need humans don't to need do humans. any of this anymore and blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, well, you have these people out there. I well, think most of their intentions are good. Of course, their intentions uh, are pure and that's, that, it's sort of like Immanuel Kant. They think that all matters is intentions. And I, and, and I wish they'd get over that. Look, they'll say, my friends on the left, and I do have a lot of friends on the left, mm -hmm. they'll say, we ought to put a tax on soft drinks because boy, it's making poor people obese. This is part of the paternalism. And then I say, well, isn't labor the same way? If you make the price of labor higher, won't people consume less labor? Oh, no, 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 that's not true. But, but dear, you just said that it works for soft drinks. Why not for labor? Oh, labor and soft drinks are different. Yeah. And, you know, okay, gee whiz. So people are gonna hire people at $15 when they're only worth $10. Yeah. Hey, what kind of insanity do you think prevails in the business world? Right, and then the same people who are out there protesting for the $15 minimum wage are the same people that are buying a lot of stuff on Amazon privately at home. They're, well, they're, so it's, it's, we're all, we all sort of live in this strange place between our actions and our... I know, it's like being against Chinese trade yet then buying a $5 hammer yeah. made in China. Or like Donald Trump, being against Chinese trade and those ties that he wears four inches too low yeah. are, are um, <laughs> all made in China. Right, so in Trump's case, when I saw people tweeting about that, I actually argued he was making logical sense because he was saying, look, our deals are bad, so me as a businessman makes them in China or in Mexico, but I want the deals to be better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, do, you, but, do you think that's a fair? Yeah, I, I think that's a fair uh, characterization of his thinking. Yeah, to, I'm not saying it's right, but to, I'm saying to that, the small extent yeah. that he thinks at yeah. all. But but <laughs> but it's not. I think you agree. It's not sensible as economics. There, <laughs> you you can't you can't get a better deal than more or less free trade, and that's where we've moved. I mean, after the war, every country was was, was protectionist. There were no free trade companies. Mm -hmm. Countries, even the old free trade company Britain, had long since, thirty years before, become a, a, a protectionist country. And then, since then, we've been moving steadily towards free trade, and it's been very good for the poor of the world. The, this idea that the poor are made worse off by free trade is just lunacy. Interesting. Poor, because you know, it's the wage per. What you can get with the wage is mm -hmm. the key point. And what you can get with the wage has steadily increased. Even though you've heard people say, oh, it's, things are getting worse. No, they're not. Yeah. The sky is not falling. So what do you make of Trump when it comes to economics then? Because on one hand, I think there's a sense, you know, a lot of people like the fact that it was buy America, we're gonna fix these trade yeah, deals, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna do that. 
But that's also, that's not really a conservative position because no, it is not. gonna take more government interference so of course it is. to do those things. So he's sort of, what does this say really about the conservative movement? Well, he's actually? not a conservative. Yeah. And that's why people like uh, uh, Ryan didn't like him mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and Romney and so forth, <laughs> who embarrassingly yeah. bowed to the new emperor. You saw that picture at dinner? Oh, Ooh. hey. Uh, <laughs> But okay, um, but, but I want what's best for the American people. I don't care whether it's thought to be progressive or conservative or, or, or liberal, real liberal, classical liberal. And his policies are just not gonna help the ordinary person. In fact, what I kind of hope, I actually I don't hope it exactly, but I think what is gonna happen mm -hmm. is it'll be so plain that his policies don't help those 80,000 people who got him in the White House. Um, uh, they'll, maybe they'll wake up, I hope they do, and see that, that, look, manufacturing jobs in the United States peaked in 1977. They've been going down ever since. Why? Is it because of China and Mexico and so on? Not much. That's maybe 10% of the lost jobs. But jobs are being lost either to other Americans moving to California or Texas, especially to Texas, or to automation. Mm -hmm. Just as you said, uh, the, the store, the bricks and mortar store for Amazon has no people in it. Yeah. Well, that's what's happening and that's a good thing, not a bad thing. The purpose of the economy is not to make jobs. Jobs are infinite. We can make construction workers use teaspoons instead of shovels, and that'll make for more jobs. Right. But we, if the purpose of an economy is to, is to get more goods and services, so that we have the, have the leisure to pursue our hobbies and to educate ourselves. So would a classical liberal want a true, what, what would be the difference in an economic sense? from your argument as a classical liberal to someone like Paul Ryan, who I think is probably more of a libertarian, but at the same time, he's stuck in it with the Republicans, so then it, it, it blurs well, the line. Well, some of the proposals that he and um, especially Trump are gonna make, and I hope they pass, make sense to me, like cutting the corporate income tax. Mm -hmm. Corporate income tax, most economists, left and right agree, is a kind of a silly tax. It's it's, it, it's double taxation to start with, but it's, but it's also- Can we just explain why that is? Because I know people say that, but for people don't understand, that money's been taxed throughout, you been, paid payroll tax and all the- you, Exactly. All the people involved, the human beings involved, the workers, people employed by the, by the suppliers to the corporation, the owners of the various corporations that supply them, the customers, the, the, uh, the, the owners of the stock and the corporation you're talking about, all of them get taxed on their income. Right. And that I think, I, I, I wish not, I wish there was other ways of taxing like consumption taxes, but set that aside. Income tax, we know who pays it pretty right. much. When I get taxed, I get taxed. Yeah. And there it is, Deirdre McCleskey pays about a third of her income to the government. Okay, yeah. uh, at least the marginal income. But we don't know who pays the corporate income tax. We've been working on it for about 70 years, trying to figure out with econometrics and fancy math and uh, we do studies and uh, we don't know who pays it. Mm -hmm. It may be the workers for the corporation, it may be the managers, maybe the uh, owners. That's what people think, it, that it's these rich owners and they're not, for one thing they're not rich and for another thing we don't know they pay it. Maybe the customers, Right, Who meaning pays? that it trickles down to the it, workers no, it, or the customers, it, it goes the away. cost. It goes away, the cost is imposed at the, at the level of corporate profits. Right. Suppose the corporation moves to Ireland. Who ultimately pays for that? Who gets hurt, who gets helped? Well, <clears throat> some Irish people get helped and some Americans, employees, say, get hurt. Mm -hmm. So in effect, the burden of the tax <laughs> is on these American workers. Right. And <clears throat> I'm not saying we know that because we don't know. So it, it's crazy to have a tax that you don't know the incidence of. You don't know who really pays it.
So when Trump then says, okay, we're gonna renegotiate these trade deals to keep co companies in America, yeah. that makes sense to a lot of people. I know, but it also- But you're saying it doesn't because of regulate, because it's done via regulation. Well, we no, it, what, what the problem with it is that we don't know who's gonna get the benefit and the, what we do know, suppose we just cut off foreign trade entirely, now that's not his proposal, but suppose we just walled off the United States, well then, Every American would be poorer, mm -hmm. every single American. Now some of them <coughs> would get fancier jobs because we'd have to make our own steel instead of importing it as we do largely now. <coughs> but so plus for them, everyone else get, gets hurt. That's true of the mi mi minimum wage. It's true of a lot of the, look, I was talking to the, to the makeup person here about licensing hairdressing. She's also a hairdresser, mm -hmm. besides being a cosmetologist. Cosmetology is not licensed, hairdressing is. <clears throat> so hairdressers have a little bit higher income, say, not that high, but a little bit higher because of this cr these crazy licensing laws. You have to go to school for two years to become a hairdresser. What? <laughs> um, we we yeah. economists are not licensed. You can you can set up as yeah. an economist tomorrow. I just spray once. And then kinda... <clears throat> well, but forget about the hair. You can become <laughs> an, a professional economist tomorrow by right. just hanging out a shingle. And is that easy? It's that easy. Jeez. There's no. You don't have to get a PhD or anything. Oh man. You just say I'm an economist because there are no laws against that. Yeah. Where there are laws against calling yourself a hairdresser without licensure. That means that everyone who all the women, especially, um, have slightly higher prices for hairdressing. Mm -hmm. And this little group of hairdressers are a little bit better off. Now that's a lousy deal. And that's what this anti-trade, uh, minimum wage, more regulation, that's what it does. It, mm -hmm. it gives George <laughs> or Harriet a little bit it's like agricultural subsidies, and everyone else is made worse off. So, because then all the people that have to use them exactly. have to pay more. They have to pay more. And, and then may have less money for Take a look else. at agricultural subsidies. Cotton farmers. Large cotton farmers are the main, I mean large, rich people. Mm -hmm. 500 of the, uh, no, 20 of the top billionaires in the United States, billionaires, get agricultural subsidies from the United States government. I don't mean that's the main source of their income because agriculture is quite a small industry in the United States. But yeah. you can tell, you know, it's it big, massive cotton fields in uh, Alabama are being financed by the United States government. It's nuts. So how do we untangle some of that stuff? There, there's so much of that, that, this idea of crony capitalism and the, you know, the, yeah. the giant, these 20 people that can pay all the lobbyists to, and know. this of course is what Trump was running against, it's what Bernie Sanders was running against. I know. How do you untangle some of that stuff without actually burning down the system? Because well, that's what I think a lot of people think is we have to burn the system down, I and I, I certainly wouldn't be for that. It's puzzling, I, it, because look, the system is democracy. And I'm in favor of democracy. I, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat, small d. Um, uh, H.L. <laughs> Mencken, the great li libertarian journalist of 100 years ago, said, democracy is the theory that the ordinary people know what they want and deserve it good and hard. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I'm afraid, what's happening with Trump. But um, what to do? <clears throat> Well, maybe Trump will be able to stop some of the regulations, but there's a clumsiness about it. He, he's put uh, uh, the, this, this oil man um, uh, forward as his uh, uh, Secretary of State, and he's handed over the Department of the Interior yeah. to another oil man. Right, so Rex Tillerson, the, the Exxon yeah. guy, we'll see, by the time this airs, he might it not, sounds like he, he might, is, he but might, I... He might not make it. But, yeah, we but, know that Trump but, but tries to... the Secretary of the Interior is not a problem. He's, yeah. He, is it a he or a she? I can't remember. But in any case, oil 
corporations, big corporations, are going to do very well probably in the Trump administration. And mm -hmm. you notice that, by the way, in the stock market. Mm -hmm. Right, oil, stock markets. Oil and oil stocks in particular have gone up because mm -hmm. they said, oh, well, maybe this guy, we can work. We can work with this guy. And that's exactly the problem that you mentioned. It's crony capitalism, not the kind of capitalism that you and I admire, which is not cronies. It's letting people do what they want and uh, d depending on the tremendous amount of cooperation that goes on in a free market um, system and the competition that goes on to, to protect consumers as it does. So I don't know, I, I'm a little bit pessimistic that we can untangle it. Right. Because the, here's why I mentioned democracy. Because the reason we have big government is that about 100 years ago, the people, now fully enfranchised in countries like Britain and France and the United States, demanded it. They demanded protection from the government. And so people keep voting for socialism, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, the size of governments, the United States and Japan are among the smallest, but still they're very big in the, in, in, in the rich countries. The, 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 the people keep voting for, for subsidies and blah, blah, blah. Extreme cases, Argentina, where everyone subsidizes everyone else. Now, mm -hmm. just think about that for a moment. You can see that's not going to work out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so I, I, th there is this conflict between the democracy of politics and the democracy of the marketplace. And I'm in favor of both of them. But I recognize that there's a dilemma, there's a conflict here, and that the democracy of the uh, of politics tends to want to <laughs> kill it, off the yeah. democracy of the market. Yeah, that's really interesting. So when somebody would say, and I think this is most of the criticism that I hear when I've brought on classical liberals or libertarians, mm -hmm. and they say, free market, free market. We don't like crony capitalism, but we want the free market. That's me. The, the most of the pushback that I get is people say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. If you let people do whatever they want, then ultimately that's what will breed crony capitalism. Yeah, now, I suspect you don't agree with that, no, but how, no, how would you argue no, against I, that? I don't agree with it. it there, there's this tremendous fear among my friends on the left about shoe companies. <laughs> they're, Continue. They're, they're <laughs> terrified at the big corporations, you know, new balance, just Ooh, ooh, scary music, ooh, the monopoly, <laughs> and it's so silly because the big monopoly is the government. They, because the government has the monopoly of violence. Yeah. Um, alas, well, it has to. I'm, I'm not in favor of multiple competing violent forces. That's right. I, You're for one government that should I'm have, for one should government have the army that has but, the monopoly of yeah. violence. But then we've really got to watch it very closely because it's easy to misuse it. And, it's, and the, uh, the underlying threat of a government is, is violence, physical violence. And the trouble is that they, they, they can use it, whereas New Balance can't force you to buy, can't put a 38 to your head and force you to buy its shoes. Mm -hmm. So Nike and New Balance and all the others are competing with each other. And that's by far a better protection for the interests of ordinary people than are the so-called protections that the government offers. Because you know, let, let's take food quality. Why aren't, why, why isn't there are very frequent cases of people being killed by, by restaurants, poisoned? I mean, why not? Uh, hey, what, what's stopping it? And they'll say, oh yes, food inspection. Yeah. <laughs> and this is crazy. Right. Any person who owns a restaurant knows but the food inspectors come once or twice a year, max. Yeah. And often they're corrupt, and you can pay them twenty dollars to overlook the rat feces in the in the in the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Whereas, look, <laughs> put it this way. Yeah. If Coca-Cola, if they found one mouse in one can of Coca-Cola anywhere in the world the Coca-Cola Corporation would go bankrupt. Yeah, the endless PR, the, the years. Endless PR, all the years of b building up Coke as the real thing would go right down the drain. Yeah. And so that expenditure they make on advertising 
is a bond, so to speak. It's a bond they've put up, enormous billions of dollars a bond to shore up their reputation for having a, a soft drink that doesn't have mice in it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they tried that, didn't Wasn't that New Coke? There was a, yeah. they, 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 well, they, they, that was consumer, uh, consumer preference. But, but, you know, poisoning is not popular. There's a nice fact. <laughs> If you ask, um, who's that guy who travels around doing food shows? Oh, Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, Anthony Bourdain, he's yeah. great. If you ask him what to eat in a foreign country, he says, for God's sakes, don't eat the hotel food. Yeah. Eat the street food. Because the street vendors have regular customers in their neighborhood, they poison someone, they're finished. That's it. Whereas so the, the, the hotels, they go away. 